1885, there was open land in the middle of nowhere at the bottom of Africa with not too much going on other than some farming. <clears throat> in 1886, a guy called George Harrison, not the guy from the Beatles, found gold on a farm called Langlachte, and all hell's been breaking loose ever since. Gold seekers rushed in, started pitching their tents and prospecting, and soon it would become the world's biggest campsite. As more and more gold was found, the camps got spruced up, the systems jacked up, and the people stacked up. Johannesburg would expand quickly, and the foot remains flat down on the pedal, with mine dumps appearing over the city over the years as evidence of the progress. The tented camp soon developed into a tin roof shanty settlement because it seemed like the logical step, I guess, which in turn became an Edwardian-style town and eventually the current sprawling African city that is today's Johannesburg. Although there are still lots of tents and shanty towns in the mix. Like any true mining town, hundreds of thousands of fortunes have been made and lost, many backs have been stabbed, and heaven and hell have been found millions of times over. The name's Johannesburg, Joburg for short, JHB when abbreviated. Sometimes it's even called Josie, though that can feel a bit like calling Attila the Hun Tilly. <laughs> There are 3 million people in Joburg and 10 million in the greater metropolitan area. Although cities like Cairo and Lagos might feel grumpy to hear it, it's undoubtedly the economic powerhouse of Africa. This comes with a price to pay though. There's so much turmoil above South Africa on the map, and within it too, that it feels like there's a constant immovable weight on the country's shoulders. You know that image of Atlas holding the world above his head? Now imagine that same thing with woodpeckers and piranhas picking and snapping at his sides and ankles. That's South Africa. And right at the heart is Joburg, Igoli, the city of gold, the engine room. For everything that it faces, it's definitely a strong heart and a strong body. It goes through so many traumas and comes out on the other side that the bad things simply become battles and skirmishes in a war that, whatever the cost, the city must win. It's a young place, and if gold had never been found, it wouldn't even be here. There's trauma, riches, despair, and magic, both black and white, the magic I mean, all around, all the time. And at every intersection between mansions and country clubs, there'll be people with less than nothing pleading for help. With all the hectic and all the good, the city's become slightly unhinged. Red is green, left is right, cops are busy, and deadlines very, very tight. It can be so confusing. Everything will be going great. Then your buddy gets shot dead by some drunk guys who stole a gun and nobody gets arrested. Somebody comes into your house one night and shoots your dog. And when you report it to the police, they tell you there's nothing they can do about it and you must go tell the SPCA. You'll be in traffic one day and a guy will get out of his car and shoot another guy in the neck for cutting him off. Then everything's fine for a while. Then babies get raped because people think it's a cure for AIDS and other people get killed by mobs just because they're foreigners. And drunk drivers kill sober drivers and bribes are made and crimes well paid and nothing gets better. Then it does for a while, then it doesn't anymore. Then somebody calls you with a great opportunity and you're up all night working on the proposal and you think to yourself, hey, this is why I'm here. Then the power goes out. Then it comes back on and it's much more expensive. And somebody gets their throat slit in front of their kids for a cell phone and you look at the trees in the sunset and you think, wow, that is so nice. Then somebody smashes your window and you didn't see him coming because you were looking at the trees in the sunset. Then another friend gets hijacked, then your mom, then everyone's making money, then they're not. And you go a little crazy and a little more, then you lose the plot, then you're angry, then you're positive, then you're terrified, then you're anxious, and you just want to survive. Then you want to get out and you can't, then you can and you don't want to anymore. And if you think about everything too much, you start losing your mind because you just want to help. Then you're all over the place and dogs are barking and miners get trapped and nobody from the bank calls you back. 80. And somebody wants something from you everywhere you go and you just can't give to everyone because you can't. 80. And you want to and you don't want to and you feel good and you feel bad and you feel lucky and you feel Baby. sad. What? Just relax. <sighs> you're right. Yeah, you're totally right. Welcome to Joburg. Bye. Hi. The place that was on the shores of an inland sea three billion years ago is now pretty much the only major city in the world not built on a large water source. Thing is, they found gold in the middle of nowhere, and you know how the ancient saying goes, first we find the gold, then we sell it, then we'll get whatever we need. It's not about Paris, and we're not going to talk about the fucking, you know, floating down in whatever, the, the sign on a gondola or some shit. I was born in Joburg. Josie is its own beast, but it's also an African city. Joburgers are the great survivors. We are a proud people, a proud nation that has come through so much. You know what? what? Crime's the new say. <laughs> you look at that. That's what I say. In this country, hey, to sleep in the streets is dangerous. You can't wake up in the morning, your head is that side and the rest of the body is <laughs> as we actually Adrian Clive at the moment is struggling to survive in Joburg. Oh. 
now we come through every single time and we'll do it again this time. We'll just be a hardier bunch of people. And one way or another we survive. Joburg is not Cape Town, for which every day I give thanks. George Harrison. Since democracy arrived in 1994, the city's become a whole new beast. Always changing, always expanding, its previous lives ever more distant. At the heart of it all, Johannesburg became like a petri dish for some crazy science experiment. The dish was way too small though, and the experiment was destined to overrun the lab. Luckily for now, the city holds its destiny in its hands as it tries to figure out how to learn from the past and work in the present with the future in mind. No guide to Johannesburg would be believable without acknowledging its scary side. The biggest boogeyman that's affected our image and psyche more than anything else is crime. Because it's fun to play in, it's lovely to shop in, it's not terribly safe. In my life in Johannesburg, I've been hijacked, mugged, um, shot at. If you live only in a small enclave of Joburg, you'll assume that it really is Josie Shiny. Drive a little bit, 15 to 20 minutes in almost every direction, and you'll see that we haven't yet gotten where we need to be. The minute you have people who have nothing to lose, because they have no place to stay, they don't have a job, and they hang around most of all watching people going about their lives, making it, looking prosperous. You have a recipe for disaster right there. Right next to houses like this, there are places like this. After nearly two decades of democracy, too many Joe Burgers remain in the never-ending limbo of informal living. I think you see rising prosperity, but also rising poverty. Wherever you look, people are struggling, you know. They can't live with that money. Joe can be stressful and tiring. And, uh, tiring it, it can lead to a certain fatigue, and people would say, Gee, I want to shut down, I want to get out. Some of the guys, they, they, they take alternative um, uh, uh, routes to get money. What the police call house robberies, I think, are the most frightening. Because our alarm systems and our security systems are so sophisticated, the robbers are now attacking when our guard is down, when we're at home. Because it's always there, always around you, always reading about it, it's like this Thing that's waiting behind the corner for you. One morning, um, a woman had been, her husband had been hijacked and shot dead in the driveway. And we got there just after it happened, and his body was lying there. And you could see she was in complete, complete shock. She hadn't, she couldn't understand what had happened. She said to us, come in and have a cup of tea. And then she disappeared. And she came back a while later and she said, sorry, sorry, I just had to go and take him a, a duvet and a pillow. She put a, you know, covered him with a duvet and put a pillow under his head because she was concerned and he was lying there dead. How do you survive it? Physically, you're, you're always alert and that has its positives and its negatives. And of course, private security firms are creaming it here. I mean, they, they get clients, willing clients in all of us. They, they tell you of all the incidents that are happening around the place. They make you shit yourself. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, they're focusing you on to accept their proposal. We will get you burglar proofing, we'll get you bulletproof uh, windows for your car. We will get this, we will get you that. I do, to a certain degree, believe that you attract what you fear. It scares me and it excites me in a sick kind of way sometimes. But on the other hand, when you look at the research, there is no particular profile of victim. The bottom line is anybody who says crime doesn't exist or is not as bad in Johannesburg is trying to be optimistic and I don't have a problem with that. But when you get marked once or twice and the risk of getting shot is there, I would rather say let admit there is a problem. Time is a problem. Let's acknowledge it. Let's deal with it. I know always that I'm living in a Johannesburg and I'm aware of crime when I go to my village. I go there and I find myself, I'm locking windows. You know, you get into a car, you start, you start the car, you lock it and people look at you funny because they say, well, if it's only you and the cattle on the road and the donkeys, why are you locking the cars, you know? When I was a kid, the word hijack meant one thing. A person taking over an airplane, Carlos the Jackal style. In Joburg, it means somebody pointing a gun at you and trying to relieve you of your vehicle. In 2007, two days before the South African rugby team became world champions for a second time, 
Lucky Dubé, our greatest reggae artist, was killed in a hijacking. He was shot by hijackers. He was only 43 years old. He was killed for nothing. They didn't even take his car. His kids watched him die, shot in front of him. The next day, all you're reading is Lucky Dubé's dead. When people leave for greener pastures, we talk of the brain drain. Lucky Dubé and everyone else who's been taken from Joburg have left on the soul train. Their lives ended for cars, money and stuff. If something is happening in your neighborhood, the best way to deal with it is to take up, well, I wouldn't say arms, but to stand up and do something about it. Without discipline, the world is going like it's going at the moment. So shooting guns. I've never actually shot a proper gun. So since we're doing Surviving Joburg, I think it's time to come have a little go. Whoa. <laughs> Front to back. Okay, now we do it properly. Next one, an Uzi. <laughs> I think Uzi might be my gun. <laughs> but I tell you what, I'd be quite happy with a gun-free world. I felt shaky when I first picked up that hag gun. When I was about to shoot, I didn't know what to expect. I think I just closed my eyes. No guns, please, 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 guys, please. Fuck, no guns. As much as we like pushing against the envelope of being a fairly a lawless and wild city, I think there have to be limits on that, otherwise you do begin to hurt yourself. Hurting ourselves is something we're very good at, and special mention has to be made here of our driving skills. difficult to find a good example of a typically foolish Joburg driver. My friend Paul asked me one time... So who's the best driver you know? My answer was... I honestly believe I'm one of the best drivers in the world. I bet you I'm better. Paul, I've never had even a fender bender. Here's what happened three hours later. <laughs> ah. 36 hours later, I drove into the back of someone. <laughs> That's bad, dude. Here's my car 70-something hours after telling Paul that I'm the best driver I've ever met. As long as drunk driving and the sort of driving you see every day is permitted or ignored, we're going to have a death rate on the roads which is amongst the highest in the world, despite having some of the better roads in the world. I've got to go to the magistrate's court because I got a speeding fine the other day. The lady was very nice about it though. How much was it? 250. How fast? I was doing 97 in a 60 zone. What you're doing is antisocial as well as criminal. And until we stigmatize road transgressions, we haven't got a hope in hell of improving our road accident rate. I've just got one more sad thing to show you. In 50 BC, all roads led to Rome. In Southern Africa today, most roads lead to Joburg. The biggest source of immigration is Zimbabwe, thanks to years of meltdown there and a very strange man called Robert Gabriel Mugabe. When you come to Joburg, it's a place where people who want to survive come to. This is what Johannesburg is. All it is is a series of internal migrations and external ones. It's how it started and it's probably how we've grown and how we're going to grow into the future. Most of us make, made a mistake to come here. You understand? And then when they get here, they, they find out that, you know, there's actually nothing here for them to do. You know, so they start they go into crime, they steal. They rob, they do anything. Yeah, and you know, the important thing in Nigerians 
is that wherever we are, we believe that we will survive. Oh yes. If you are a Christian, you know the Bible says that even in a foreign city, thou shall possess your possession. Oh yes. So we believe Hallelujah. in that. Amen. The people that are educated here, they are friendly and they are very nice. But if you meet those ones that are not educated, hi, they make this place look like hell for you. The South Africans actually make money from crime, they, they do. But the difference is, when they make their money, if you come to Hillbro late in the night, you see the tortoises, you see the criminals, what they do is that when they make money, they go to the pub. They drink it all out, and by the next morning, they broke. You understand? But the Nigerian man, when he comes to South Africa, his first year and whatever, he saves money, you understand? He makes a plan for himself, he, he, he does the crime or the drug dealing, and all he's thinking about is how much money can he save. I was driving one day, the metro cop stopped me. Because of my accent, you know I'm not a South African. He saw it say, hey, you are from Nigeria? I said, yeah, hey, you people are criminals. So I was laughing, why do you say so? He said, hey, you people should leave our country. Go back to your country. What, 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 you understand me? This is somebody who is wearing the image of South Africa, sounding like this. With no adequate system to help the foreigners, they become the ultimate survivors. Some become criminals, which makes locals angry, and others become successful, which makes locals even angrier. In this place here, which remember is so close to here, locals, encouraged by community leaders, turned with a vengeance on the foreigners living among them. The situation soon degenerated into a blind frenzy, and overnight, parts of the city became war zones. This is for when you feel happy. Eventually, the government called in the army to help out. Given our history of violent oppression, it was a big thing to see troops in town. So this is for when you're feeling happy again. And this is for when you're feeling sad. And this is for when you feel something. Faced with an indisputable humanitarian disaster, the government was forced to set up makeshift refugee camps around Johannesburg. A few months after the craziness ended, the camps were closed down. The refugees were left to make a plan here or go back home. When I was in primary school, there in Nigeria, then South Africa was not, not yet free. We used to contribute money. Listen, you are enjoying here. Your people are suffering in South Africa. We need money to support this black government. When people feel like the goodies of democracy are just not arriving, they will seek to pin that blame on somebody. Most South Africans who are getting all high and mighty and righteous about being South African would be shocked they come from Senegal. They would be shocked they come from DRC. What you really do want to do is the bloody hard work of assimilating um, people into communities, into the fabric of the cities, because otherwise there's always going to be an other. But if we think we're going to stop it by being hostile, we're kidding ourselves. So, but nevertheless, life goes on. This is the United States of Africa. What can we do? Maybe someday everybody will understand that we belong to each other. You know, in Australia, the Oaks came with changing light bulbs in, in homes. The Caulfield municipality changed light bulbs in, in Oaks homes. At, their at, at, at the municipality's request and giving them free light bulbs for 15 years to save energy. Now, the, the psychology in Joburg would be if I had knocked at your door and said, I'm here to change the light bulbs because of the municipality has said that's energy saving and over 15 years we're going to save X. You don't let the oak in your house. Do you know what I mean? It comes with a ladder and a box of light bulbs. You tell the oak to fuck off. You know? And that's where we've got to get beyond. The mindset of the people have to be worked on first because if you throw money at it and the people are still the same, the result is going to be the same. The city's rough and, and it's getting too rough. And at what stage does the city tip? We never talk about good and bad. We shouldn't accept when life is less than optimal, when it's less than ideal, when the streets aren't safe. We shouldn't accept it. We take a legal route instead of taking a, a, a values-based route on many of, of the challenges that face us. 
I'll find you back in a few minutes. Ciao, ciao. Yeah, and I mean, that's like, the, that's like you know, that's what you're living with. So it is a ward. It's like you, you're capturing a hill, and then you get reinforcements coming, and the cavalry's on its way, and you think it's on its way, and they don't pitch. Bishop Titi said something very interesting the other day. He said, why don't you pick, pick up later? Why don't you start there? There are problems, but you know what? You take them on, and you say, well, do I see better opportunities? And I always do, on a daily basis. Okay, well done. We're through the worst of it. It gets better from here, I promise. Once you come to terms with being in the city, I guess it's important to adopt some type of positive, realistic outlook. Sing it! Do yourself a favor. Become your own savior. And don't let the sun go down on your grievance. I understand people leaving. I'll never discourage an oak. He wants to go, he must go. But the oak said stay must make a difference. That's, that's, my, that's my view. They need to like, instill some kind of like, positive militant attitude. So it's like, if you believe it's wrong, don't fucking moan about it. Do something. But make a real difference. Don't, don't make a difference like uh, a half-cocked difference. You've got to make a real difference. But it's hard sometimes to engage with oaks that can make a difference. And that's what we're trying to do. Hello? It's impossible to fight a war if one side doesn't show up. In Joburg, it's often best to be that side. Reacting predictably to the enemy will get you in trouble. Stay out of trouble. When you're here, be watchful, pick your battles, and don't, whatever you do, throw things at the guy with a gun-shaped pocket. There's one more thing that makes it easier to get away with crime. There are too many places to hide because there are so many trees. With all the madness going on, it's important to acknowledge the natural elements of Joburg and its surroundings in order to start understanding why it's a good place to be. In many ways, we really are sitting pretty. Much of the city sits inside the world's largest man-made forest. As you get further from the center, the tree cover thins until it merges into the original high felt vegetation. The high felt is a dry grassland plateau 1,800 meters above sea level. Epic lightning storms are a high felt trademark, with ground strikes taking thousands of pot shots around town when the season comes by. Everywhere you go in Africa, the days and nights team with life, and Joburg is no exception. Ray Heron. Hi. Hi guys. How's it going? <laughs> right now, there are, I'd say, hundreds of sacred ibises flying over us in all directions. This is the place to be for sacred harvesters. Look at it. Oh, look at that. As far as I understand, yeah, they, they don't make any sound. I don't know if they don't even have vocal cords, but I know that sacred harvesters are a silent bird. And good on them for it. If city animals don't excite you, wild animals will. One of Johannesburg's greatest advantages is that it's close to the bush. From 45 minutes outside the city, you'll find some of the best game viewing in the world. Spending time in the bush is a unique and awesome experience, and it's where you'll hear the proper voices of the wild. Okay, let's do a line, okay. <laughs> Whoop. 
That's not a great fish eagle, it's kind of, of a piggy fish eagle, but... You're gonna wanna put some logs on that fire. <laughs> and finally, the hardy da. <coughs> One of the best things about Joburg is that it's part of a beautiful country on an incredible continent. South Africa is an unbelievable place to explore, and if Joburg gets you down, take a trip out of town and you'll feel much calmer. It gets even better. Johannesburg is much closer to Mozambique than it is to Cape Town, and traveling almost anywhere in Africa is there for the taking. Just watch out for the real war zones. South Africa's national bird, it's the blue crane. Johannesburg national bird is the construction crane. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of cranes have been part of the Joburg skyline for years and they don't go away when they finish eating, they just move on to the next feed. I don't think that cities grow in linear, um, formal uh, ways that we can ever, ever plan. It's a tipping point time, I think. It's a very, very interesting time in, 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 in the development of South Africa and Joburg, because Joburg's the, the hub. It's, I think, developing its own African 21st century Afropolitan feel, and I think it can claim its space amongst those leading African cities that um, define not only a country but a continent. It's exciting to feel a city expanding around you, and it doesn't feel like it's going to stop anytime soon. I reckon in 15 to 20 years, this place is going to be a proper mega city. One of the biggest and most interesting jobs that's been keeping us busy is the Gau Train project. This is an above and below ground rapid rail commuter link that will help alleviate the ever increasing strain on our city's roads. It's definitely a step in the right direction. Traditionally, the public transport system in South Africa in general, and especially Johannesburg, has been second to none. As in, none came first and we came second. The Gautrain construction is just one example of Joburg's ongoing urban renewal. Look, anyone who has sweated through the traffic, either from here to the airport or from Joburg to Pretoria, has to just welcome this thing. Gauteng comes from two words. Gauteng, which is the province that Johannesburg is in, and train, which means train. There are thousands of jobs of all sizes on the go, and each one that we finish just strengthens our belief that we can do anything. I think in South Africa, in Joburg too, we're scared of big things, we're scared of big projects, we're scared of big thinking. We'd rather things stayed as they are. And it's the nature of the city that they won't. And much of our success as a country, as a city, depends on the perception of the greater world, of the outside world, on how we conduct ourselves. You've got a situation where lots of stuff needs to get done, so it always feels like there's opportunities around everywhere. It's not easy, especially if you're an independent operator, but the fact remains, stuff needs to get done and someone's got to do it. One thing you can say for sure about Joburg is, is they like to make things happen. It's like a continental watering hole for hustlers, entrepreneurs and general industrious types at every level. Just like miners, everyone's prospecting, searching for their share of the gold. You have opportunities in Joburg to make a difference that you don't have in any other major city in the world. I've just got this attitude that I'm just going to do it. I'll, I'll not stop until I stop. If, you, if you're a kind of person who appreciates energy and kind of can feel it and thrives on it, this is the place because it's got so much energy. What would happen if you worked even harder? What would happen if you networked better? If you want to get a lot of stuff done here, you're going to be good at multitasking. I mean, there's just no, no doubt in my mind that you can create energy here. It's got an energy that I don't think exists elsewhere in this country. You just need an eye that spots an opportunity because in everything that's going to develop, there will be a chance for you to jump in. I once knew someone who was so bad at multitasking they couldn't even drink mango and orange juice. Let's take a tour of the prospecting chain. A good place to start is traffic lights, or robots, which they're called here, and I'm not sure why. 
I think it's because when they first arrived, people saw these tall poles with flashing lights and were like, oh my gosh, it's a robot. Johannesburg intersections are like the United Nations of street vendors. Shop, shop. They hawk a range of everyday products, fruits, vegetables, flowers, not so everyday products, and African crafts. It's impossible to go through 10 minutes on the move without someone trying to sell you something. Between homeless talk newspaper sellers, fruit sellers, watch sellers, joke sellers, glove sellers, car guards, ball supplies, window washers, and all the rest, Joe Burgers frequently ask themselves, how much money do I actually spend on these things? We decided to find out. Here's how it worked. For one week, every time someone tried to sell us something we didn't already have, we had to say yes. I'm buying today. Cell phone charger, cell phone charger. I need a cell phone charger for the Motorola. How much are they? How much? Where's the phone? That's the one. Okay, I want one 18 years and I want one star. Does it work? Yeah, it's working. Five bucks, four bucks. Do I have a warranty on this thing? Thanks, guys. Ciao. We are in the dark, yes. How's it? Good and you? Yes, how much? Give me a photo, please. You got ear fruit. Shop shop. I got my license. We're going back. Because poor cell phone charger doesn't work. Right, yeah? Shop, thanks for the I want to go over the world, dude. That's exactly what I want. We're gonna show you where South Africa is, America. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Where's the maps? The maps. How much for a rosary? That's 20 rand. How much? 20. Okay, yeah, that's fair. How much the map? The map is 120. 20. Take me photo, Baba. Take me photo. Bring me some grapes. 120. I'll give you. I've got 60 for the small one. Can you give me two for 30? Okay, three. Uh, 30, 32 bucks. That's all right. Sweet. Yeah, one red, one black. Super. Ah, where's the guy with the cell phone charges? Oh no, we don't we want it. <laughs> <laughs> How much are your glasses? How much are they? Right. Yeah. He's coming like a make yourself. What do you think? Give me one foot for this one. We need to swap the charger. This one doesn't work. Yeah. Right. 120. Ooh. Oh, that one's nice. Oh, that one's nice. That one's one. much nicer. Yeah. Make it 20 bucks, my man. I'll give you 100 for the big one. Yeah. It's Africa. Africa? Yes. Thanks. Thanks, bro. Why is France on Africa? This is Europe, not Africa. Is that Europe? No, man, he said Africa. Yeah, like the other guy said, the charger works. <laughs> works, don't worry. Oh, it is Africa. My bad. My Sorry. Bad. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I'm just so, I'm running so late. I don't like it fine, well, I don't know. I don't know problem. Alright, let me give you the whole box for 25. Just like the seatless guys. I have 20 bucks for you. Okay. Yeah. I just got it wrong. This thing still doesn't work. <laughs> They're not bad though. I mean, for what? 140, that could be worse. Uh, see, bro. Ciao. Yes, I live today. Yes, I live today, bro. Uh, here we go. Grapes. Test. I don't like seeds. Seeds. But it's actually quite nice. Yes, I buy much more super glue than I'll ever need in my life, but I don't get irritated because I do think that's exciting that people are selling stuff. Even though the experiment was fun, we couldn't just go around spending money like that. We had to try to get it back, plus a little bit extra if possible. So we've taken all of our old clothes and we're having a jumble sale. We're not at the best time or place to be doing this, but hey, let's see how it goes. 10 bucks. The Owens and Ossies. Right. And it's all my truck from overseas. Same as the other one. Okay, and always, no, nah, Jeff, I stand my proud. Well, hello and say, welcome back to Gauteng. Place of gold. Place of happiness. Gauteng, man. Gauteng vibes. Well, that's nice. Just Money starts to go in pocket. And then we have something to turn around later. Are you, are you coming into the center of the century, my man? Two, four, six, eight. Six, Here's ten. Five bucks. Ten rand. Roger Federer. For you, five rand. Ten bucks. Fifteen bucks for both. My diva himself. Twelve, now get out of here. You're robbing me. Twelve bucks. Twelve bucks. I give it back to you. Buy me a burger. Okay. Okay. Sorted. Sold. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Five bucks. Let's see what we got so far. So we're looking at about maybe just over two hundred bucks. You take the notes. 
You make them into a bigger note, or you buy something that you want. And the coins you keep in your car in your back pockets, and you give it to people as tips for the next like three days. Everyone wins. Jumble sales over. I think we made about 480 bucks, and we move along. <laughs> we also thought it would be nice to organize a party for you guys while you're here. So we found a venue, made some flyers, and charged 40 bucks at the door. It turns out that saying yes to everyone on the streets for one week will cost you about 2,400 rand. With 480 bucks from the jumble sale and 3,000 from the door at the party, we came out just over 1,000 rand in the green. Woohoo! I think Joburg still works on the same kind of prospecting mentality that started it. If you've got a good idea and you keep knocking on enough doors, eventually someone's going to help you out. Of course, if you've got a crappy idea, you're just going to keep knocking on doors until you're out of steam and you get spat out on the other end. It's actually happened to me quite a lot. <laughs> if there's one thing great about Johannesburg is people are there, they want to move, they are fast, they get things going. And I like that compared to where I grew up. I think that we have a lot of people who want to do things. Um, I think they're bogged down in red tape. I mean, keep the faith, you know, there are possibilities. We are not going to perish. You can be, like, down, but I'm talking down, and then suddenly, there's optimism. We need to make the, the environment an enabler and enable these guys to start businesses. And I don't think we do enough of that. It's, it's the mindset that makes you see the brighter side of just about everything. As a place to do business, Joburg is a ball of constant activity. There seems to be a never-ending supply of ideas, energy, perseverance and enthusiasm. Resources move around fast here, sometimes a bit too fast. It takes you up, down and all over the place. And I guess you just have to try and hold on as tight as you can. If you ever visit us here, you're going to need some tips. There's no doubt that it's a city of opportunity, though it all means nothing if you're not around to take advantage of it. This is a 140, 140 millimeter bomb. Highly explosive, as you can see there. It's all going to be okay. Surviving Joburg, listen, don't succumb. Don't yeah. succumb to the idea that everybody's your enemy. That's not true. Thanks, Dennis. Ciao. Joburgers are extremely aware. They've got eyes in the back of their heads and lots of little ways to keep away from danger. I don't think it's important to go into any major detail, but definitely a good idea to go through some of the basic ones. The number one priority is to have a base. Whether it's a shack, a flat, a hotel room or a house, it's probably impossible to resist a dark side without one. Joburg is the kind of place I think that you need a local. You need to be guided by a local. It's not, you know, it's not the kind of city that you can arrive with uh, short pants and long socks and scheme that you, you're not going to discover Joburg, eh? Unless you're totally stressed first time out, you don't actually need a guide to be with you. Just get good advice and use it. It's always available. Hi. Only do things you feel comfortable with. If you get edgy, go back to base. Being at ease is your greatest ally. Be aware, of course. Be alert. It helps if you are alert. Get rid of your excessive fears. Get to know it. Um, have fun in it but also know that you, you do need to have a, a set of eyes in your back. As soon as I stop looking around me, that's when danger comes. Danger just thrives on those who don't look. If you're feeling stressed out on the road, pull into the nearest petrol station. Whether it's directions, car maintenance, getting a puncture fixed the proper way, or just having a bit of a kick around, petrol attendants are almost always enthusiastic and keen to help out. A little tip for anywhere that you go in Joburg, or South Africa for that matter, always have a knife. Because if you don't have a knife, you can't cut your built on. <laughs> I 
would say mentally embrace this place. I think you've got to learn to walk like a Joe Burger. Keep an eye out, be, be aware. Once you've got a base, you need to be mobile. Car is first prize, so anything will do. If you're gonna be on two wheels, you'd better be super careful. It's a very dangerous place to ride. My watch is falling off. I've got it back. If you have to walk, then walk. Just keep it moving. If you're walking, stay away from the streets at night. That's just my advice. It's generally best to keep as low profile as possible. Don't wear lots of jewelry or your full house Louis Vuitton tracksuit and keep valuables out of sight. Be careful. Don't relax with your cell phones, don't flash your jewelry, and think twice before you make any deals with anybody concerning big money. If you go out buffalo hunting, you're one of those people who wants to go out and shoot buffaloes, and one of the buffaloes comes and gores you. Do you need counselling? There's a degree of risk management here which says if you don't go out and shoot buffaloes in the first place, the chances of getting gored by a buffalo are reduced. It's always good to get outside and release a bit of tension. South Africans love the outdoors. You could learn to play cricket, or maybe learn how to kick a rugby ball. Because there are so many official and unofficial languages, it's always good to use some physical communication. A few mostly universal hand signals will serve you well. A thumbs up never hurts. This one works great. So does this one. You generally want to avoid this one. If you want to catch a taxi to town, just do this. And if you want to buy a round of drinks, it's the same as anywhere. If an oak chins you grief, tune him your summer jolling with your chinas and you're not sucking any cock. Oh yeah, and if someone tells you they'll do something just now, don't hold your breath. And don't forget, get out of town as much as you can. The most important thing to realize is that South Africans, and especially Joburgers, are extremely nice, warm people. Spend a day walking around saying how's it to everyone. You'll see what I mean. Most of all, I would say find a good friend. Make friends. I think South Africans are amazing people. They're, they're always eager to help. Go out, walk around, meet people. Ask for help. Don't wait to be approached. If you think you're lost, if you ask someone, that person is more likely to be good than bad. And that's how you build relationships that will eventually make you make it thrive more than just survive. For every one person who's done something nasty to me in this town, there are 200 people who've been incredibly good to me, really, really good to me. So, uh, you know, um, I think it's a good town. It's a great town. Johannesburg's a big place, and the chances are, if you keep your eye on the ball, you'll be just fine. Batteries not included, not guaranteed. It would be great to sum up Joburg in a single sentence, though I've come to accept that it's a very difficult place to figure out. I will leave you with just a few of the things that make it tick. Things that make us want to make it better. It's because of the Joburgers who are all in it together, pushing forward and mostly just trying to be positive. It's the mix of energies, opportunities and warped craziness that make you learn lots of lessons quickly, whether you want to or not. And it's the pride of being a vital part of a beautifully strange and special country. We love complaining about the problems of our city to each other and then defending it when outsiders try and do the same. We love our noisy garden creatures, even when they wake us up in the middle of the night. Though we hate finding these things in our shoes. And we get a kick out of doing more than what's humanly possible to get done in a single day. We like opening up our own businesses and then trying something else if they don't work out. And taking on big projects, knowing that come hell or high water, we'll do whatever it takes to make them happen. We enjoy soaking up the summer sun, even though there's no beach. And we never get tired of seeing the jacaranda trees bloom. We like to hustle, we really like our sunsets, and we love to party. There's lots of magic here, and the best thing is you don't have to dig too deep to find it. Where else could you be driving in traffic, then look over to your right and see a cheetah sitting in the car next to you? Where else would someone call to ask if you'd like to get paid to stick 4,000 dots on a wall in the middle of the night? And where else would you find a security guard, soccer partner, production assistant, movie sales rep, translator and friend all in one? Hopefully soon the city will become a bit less extreme so that it's easier to enjoy the best of it. There's gold here and Joe Burgers are the miners. It is slightly unhinged for sure, but not as much as people think. It's a place that goes by many names. I know I said that calling it Josie didn't really suit its character, but that was a long time ago. It's the people that give the city its personality, so I guess we should call it whatever we want it to be. Joburg is marching forward, and the camps are still getting spruced up, the system's jacked up, and the people keep on stacking up. Overall, I think there's a lot of realistic reasons to be positive and hopeful about Joburg, for all the scary stuff. So, dare I say it, here's to Josie. It's a true African city. 
for all the good and for all the bad. It really is a mining town at the moment. It's a frontier town. And I keep on coming back to Joburg and I think, fuck, I, I, I love living here. It's hard to say. I really want to be positive. I love it here. I mean... It's... Uh... It's Johannesburg, and, and I make my peace with that, and I, I survive it. I mean, I, I, I thrive in this town. I'm realistic, right? I'm 40 years old. I didn't grow up here. I didn't have a relative here. Probably with my surname, you'll find there are only two or three of us in the whole city. But I'm staying here. I've decided this is the place I want to be because I know I can launch a lot of enterprises out of this city. My personal dream is for one thing only, and that it is a safer city. We, all we're going to do is we're, gonna, we're just going to adapt more and more. But I've never wanted to be anywhere but here. And I think Joburg has a real future with all of the frustrations of a big city, but I'm very happy to be here. It's, it touches me in a different way. Because you, you feel like you're here, so let's like fix this place. You can't fix Paris, you can't fix London, you can't fix Sydney, you can fix Joburg. Oh